Okay, so as you start to hear from different departments and different teachers, feel free to make notes on that sheet as far as uh, classes that you heard that sound interesting to you, uh, classes that you might want to take. If there's a course that you hear about you want a little bit more information on, uh, use that sheet to help you out. Okay? We will talk a little bit more about that at the end. Uh, but at the beginning here, we're going to go through uh, each department, and they will tell you a little bit about what they offer. So we're going to start with the man himself, Mr. Lowe, representing the business department. Good morning, guys. So got a lot of business options here for you. Um, I'm going to start with Intro to Business. Intro to Business is a survey course. It uh, gives you a broad scope of the entire business realm. Um, we talk about sales and finance and supply chain, marketing and management. Uh, in this class, um, great opportunity to launch your own business, uh, make real money. Uh, we partnership with Junior Achievement. So great survey course if you have any interest in the business department at all. From there, I'll go on to personal finance. Um, great opportunity for you to explore some things that you're going to need to do in the future. Uh, in personal finance, uh, it's a semester long and you have the option to take it as a year long class. Uh, in this class, you'll talk about budgeting and investing, um, how to buy a car, renting an apartment. Um, so a lot of things that you'll, you'll definitely need to do in the future. Uh, from there, some of the course offerings with regards to marketing. Uh, with marketing, we have a marketing one, uh, a marketing two, and then an advanced marketing that goes on to school store. In the marketing one class, um, we talk about functions of marketing. In marketing two, a little more in-depth look at those marketing topics uh, with several projects added. Uh, and both of those would have VPAA credits. Uh, the advanced marketing, um, a lot of students interested in advanced marketing and going on to running the school store. Um, you would run the school store, develop and sell products, um, study risk management stuff, uh, as well as corporate branding, human resources, and marketing research. Um, you can take that either as a semester or a year-long uh, class. You must complete an application, and priority is given to those who have taken marketing one and two and it's also uh, allows you the VPAA credit. So just keep that in mind uh, as you're kind of laying out your schedule um, over the course of the next uh, several years if, if you are interested in taking that. Um, one class I'd like to, to mention that is not um, on your uh, course selection sheet there uh, is a course we've offered in the last several semesters. It is sports business management. Uh, basically, it's an extension of the marketing program. Uh, only everything uh, is geared towards sports and entertainment. So those of you that, that love sports, um, every project uh, that we do in that uh, course is geared to sports and entertainment. Um, we do partner with a lot of the area um, semi-pro teams, um, have a lot of guest speakers and things that come in. Um, we've done field trips to uh, Michigan State's um, practice facilities. Um, so any of you that are interested in sports um, definitely want to put that on your radar. We also offer accounting, um, learning how money flows in and out of a company, um, looking at company asset values, liabilities, and equity. Um, that can be a math or an elective uh, credit, um, so some options there. Um, AP Computer Science and Programming, uh, I don't think Mr. Smith is here, um, would definitely default to him uh, with regards to specific questions on the computer science and programming uh, class if you're interested in any of that. And then uh, last course that I'd like to mention, um, work study and co-op. Um, you have the opportunity to count your part-time job as high school credit. Um, this would take place when you are a senior, however, okay? just. Again, trying to give you um, kind of the, the scope of the business department, um, some of those options not available in your first few semesters of high school, uh, but uh, definitely opportunity exists. So appreciate you coming in. All right. Thank you, Mr. Lowe. Uh, he did mention uh, the term VPAA a lot. I didn't mention earlier, but that stands for Visual Performing Applied Arts you are required to get at least one of those credits. Next up, we have Mr. Fuel from the art department. All right. 
Great. Thank you, Mr. Perkins. Uh, we're going to get a slide up here behind me that's going to go through some student work that's been made in the last year and a half or so while I've been here. Uh, hi. I look at, I see uh, a few faces I recognize. I got to teach cartoon design down with you guys last year. Uh, this year I've been up here full time. If you haven't met me before, I'm Mr. Fuel. I'm the art teacher up here at Central High. Uh, I'm going to kind of go through fairly quickly uh, some of the basic options that are listed there on your course offerings. Uh, under the visual arts option, I think it's like down like the bottom left hand corner there, uh, you're going to see uh, a several different classes. We kind of changed up some prerequisites uh, from when I arrived, and so you guys have a pretty wide uh, selection of things that you have the opportunity to take next year. So uh, the first one on there is a class called Art Survey. It's kind of like an introduction to art class. Uh, if any of you are kind of coming in, maybe you have been more down in the wood shop, or maybe taking some music classes, and maybe you're interested in art but haven't had any art experience previously, and so you're kind of looking to sort of dip your toes in the water and get a feel for it. Art Survey is a great class for that. It's a class where we do lots of different art projects from all of my other classes, so you kind of get like a little sampling of everything, uh, and as well as getting to do some kind of fun, interesting projects that we do just in that class that maybe don't fit necessarily into the template of any one of the other classes. Okay, it's a great intro to art class. Uh, my other classes, um, you're going to see uh, a few up here that are listed as photography or illustration or graphic design. Uh, those are all of my digital art classes, all of which sort of fall under that banner that says digital media on your course offerings. And I want to point that out because uh, if you're interested in any of those three that I said, photography, illustration, or graphic design, the course that you would write down is called digital media. It's a little bit different than my other classes in that uh, it's not any one single big group focus like you might be used to in a traditional classroom setting, but rather you kind of come into the class and you choose to focus on one section. Uh, and so I've got a little subsection of photographers, a subsection of illustrators, and some people just doing graphic design. So it's a pretty open, kind of more exciting, dynamic studio environment where you get to kind of choose what you want to do, and it's all very digitally and commercially focused like you're seeing in some of the examples up there. Uh, the last two options available for you as freshmen are my drawing and painting class and my sculpture and ceramics class. Uh, as the names would suggest, those are a little bit more traditional, a little bit more uh, focused on those single, singular disciplines. So those of you that enjoy drawing or painting or want to be able to get to enjoy drawing and painting, uh, those are great options for you. Uh, I do want to clarify one thing on there because that can be a little bit confusing as well. As all of my classes, all those basic studio classes, whether it's photography, illustration, drawing, painting, sculpture, all of those go up to level four. So when you look at that sheet and it says like sculpture one on there, uh, that means that's just the first semester. So all of my classes, except for my AP class, are one semester long. So hopefully that makes it easier to fit into your schedule. I know you've got a lot of other requirements in there. Uh, but in the event that maybe you've been with Mr. Molia all this time so far and you really enjoy art and maybe you want to fit more art in there, there are options for you as freshmen where you could, I have freshmen right now this year that took drawing and painting one with me in the fall semester and are in drawing and painting two in the spring semester. Okay, so those classes kind of stack and build up on each other and you get more opportunity to do more advanced and have some more creative uh, freedom in those classes as well. Okay, so uh, if any of you guys have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Um, if you want to know more about me, I'm sure you can find some people that had me in cartoon design the last year. I'd be excited to have you next year. Okay, guys? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Fuel there, telling us about the art department. Next up, we have Mr. Miedema telling us about the industrial arts department. Hello, folks. Um, yeah, my name is Mr. Miedema. I recognize a couple of you from last night's little uh, shindig that we had with the eighth graders, and you guys got to come up here with your parents. Um, I teach uh, wood shop. I also teach engineering and architecture, and I also teach that gone boarding class. Um, do I just hit this here? Space bar? All right. Um, what's the first one? It's loading. It's loading. Um, engineering, I think, might be the first one that pops up. Anyway, uh, engineering is a class where we are learning how to draw and think like engineers. And so we are using the CAD program to design and to uh, um, draw things kind of more on a, on a mechanical standpoint. Um, 
it's a class, if you are thinking about engineering, um, if you take this class, I can guarantee that you'll know if you do want to do engineering or if you don't. And so it's a great way to kind of start your career path um, into your future, um, if that's something that's kind of on your radar. Um, I also teach a class called Architecture, Architectural Rendering and Design. Um, we uh, design two houses. One is all two-dimensional, and the other one is three-dimensional. We make like a model that you can walk through, like if you watch the Fixer Upper shows, and we can do the walkthrough and see the house as we design it. Um, and that's kind of the second part of the semester. There's some pretty cool slides you guys can imagine are up behind me. But um, the last one I teach for freshmen is bench woodworking, which the slide is up there now. And uh, so that's just like um, um, we're uh, woodworking in the shop. Um, Mr. Bentley's class, you guys had Mr. Bentley. Um, it's kind of the same deal, except we have a little bit bigger shop, a little more opportunity, uh, more time um, to make some bigger and cooler things as you get into high school. Um, I think that's about it. They all cover your VPA credit, so you can take them for that. Um, well, I get a lot of freshmen that take the classes. They're one semester, so you can fit them into your schedule. Um, if you're thinking about gone boarding as a senior, um, the more classes you can take in the shop, um, the more of an asset you would be to that class. I'm um, also like digital media with Mr. Fuel. If you have any kind of uh, Photoshop or Illustrator experience, that's also a big help for gone boarding if you're thinking about that. Um, I think that's about it. So. Can't wait to see you guys. Hope you take some classes. And here it is, Mr. All right. He did Manders. have some really nice slides. We saw a little bit of those. Next up, the communications department, Mr. Manders and the wonderful Mr. Meester. Hey, there's there we go. All right. You want me to go first? All right. I'm Mr. Manders. This is Mrs. Demeester. If you look on your sheets, bottom left corner, right, for your VPAA credits, you need to get some of those at some point during your uh, four years here with us. You see Mediacom on there and you see theater. Those are the only two classes you even need to think about. If you have room in your schedule for next year, I know you, you, you cats are real busy, but if you have any room, Mediacom or theater. Uh, Mediacom, if you, we do a live TV show every day, like in 10 minutes, I got to be in there. If you're interested in photography, filming, editing, videography, telling stories, running around with your friends and having fun, take Mediacom. You need to take Mediacom to eventually take the TV broadcasting class. I also teach a class all about film production. It's called Film Projects. It's a lot of fun. You're making movies. And then this is the TV class. We've got a TV studio here. here um, it's a lot of fun. Demeester? Good morning. I'm looking around. What a beautiful bunch. My goodness, I'm so excited for next year. And my CMS teachers, I love you all so much. So thank you for being here. And thank you all for being patient. I am Mrs. Demeester. Um, I'll have about 90 of you next year for ninth grade English. And then I also teach senior English and I run the theater department. So there is a lot of teachers vying for you to take their VPAA class. So we're all here trying to sell our product. I just want you to choose the class that's best for you and that fits into things that you're interested in. Um, with the theater, Theater One, we're exploring next year. If you're interested in the tech side of theater, you don't really want to perform, still sign up for Theater One. We have kids who are going to be working tech with scenes that we'll be doing and kids that are more interested in the acting. If you're a current dancer, Theater one, theater two are classes that would be very important for you to be a part of because that's only going to enhance your skill. We won't be doing a lot of dancing choreography, but any kind of performing experience you can get is awesome. And if you're just the funny person and you want to explore that, we have, um, we'll be auditioning for our improv team in May. That will be open to current 9th, 10th, and 11th, but next year you could do that. And then we have our fall play. We have our huge variety show, Rat, Random Acts of Talent, and then our musical, which actually opens in two weeks from today, the first day of spring. We're doing the Hunchback of Notre Dame, Disney's awesome version of it. So if you're interested in seeing the level of theater that we do and you've never been to any of our shows, please come out and explore Hunchback. You can be in shows here without taking theater classes, but it certainly is more advantageous to get in front of the theater teacher if you're interested in being part of the theater program. So thanks for taking the time to be here today and whatever you decide, hopefully it's best for you.
Thanks. Okay, thank you, Communications Department. Now we're going to go through a few of the core programs here. He waited a long time, but we have Mr. George in the English All right. Department. Uh, Two choices. Top left on the back of your sheet, it says English Language Arts. You will take one of those two classes, regular English or honors English. There's the difference. Um, if you take honors English, you'll be with a bunch of kids that have chosen to be in honors English, and they will do some summer reading. There'll be a summer novel, and there will be a summer essay. Um, I teach honors 10, so then I would get you the next year. It's totally your choice. If you really enjoy reading, really enjoy writing, and want to sit around and talk about literature, honors. Okay. If you're not so much into that, than regular. You will take one of those too. Miss Wallace, it is just, I miss you so much. I uh, appreciate the front row sitters, by the way. You guys are awesome. Thanks for sitting in the front row. Um, I totally disagree with Mr. Demeester. I don't want you to take a class that fits well in your schedule. I want you to take my VPAA class. Um, and it's in the middle column, like uh, up near the top, where it says English Language Arts Department Writing for Publication. So as a freshman, you are invited to take Writing for Publication if you love to write. Um, and it is a semester class, and then it leads towards the advanced class, which is the Central Trend. I don't know if you've ever seen the thecentraltrend.com. Um, I have a slide up here that's going to go to it, but I'm not going to take the time. I don't think, Mr. Perkins, because I know you have other people that have to talk. But Thank um, you. If you take Writing for Publication as a freshman, First semester, I had maybe 10, I think, this year. Second semester, you can go right into the advanced writing for publication class, fill both your VPAAs, and also be um, on the Central Trend staff writing uh, newspaper articles. Would love, love, love to have you. That is um, a VPAA credit, is writing for publication, and uh, really appreciate it. We are so darn excited to have you here next year, so thanks for being here. You have it up for Mr. George. Always brings the energy there. Oh, thank you. All right, do we have the math department? They're not here yet, so let's skip ahead to the science department and the brilliant Miss Butler. All right, well, next year, um, your science option is biology. So all of you will be taking that next year. But we do have, after that, lots of um, opportunities for lots of electives, lots of AP courses, um, lots of opportunities for your, a lot of different choice for the years after. Perfect. Look forward to having you up here. I loved it. Short and sweet yeah. to the point. Couldn't have been better. Okay. Let's jump ahead. We'll do world language because I see the world language department here. Tell us about all the offerings that they have. I will. Bonjour tout le monde. Hola. Ni hao. Um, I am Mrs. Van Houten. If I look familiar, it's because I start my day with you at CMS uh, for one hour of French. Hello, Mary. I see you waving. Uh, and then I'm the rest of the day up here. For language, you have several choices here. Um, we offer American Sign Language, Chinese, French, my favorite personally, and Spanish. Uh, you must, to graduate, take at least one year of a foreign language of your choice uh, with a VPAA credit, just one and one, correct, counselors? I think that's correct. One. Yes. Okay. Or, um, two language classes. Most colleges recommend that you take at least two years of the same language in high school. Um, the more, what's the word I want? It competitive, the, the university you want to go to, the more language you probably want to look at. If you have French one or Spanish one now at the middle school, the high school level, sign up for French two or Spanish two. Uh, otherwise, you will sign up for the first year level of that class. Um, a word to the wise, all of the language classes are, are good. They're all about the same difficulty level. So with that said, I agree with Mrs. Demeester. Pick what your heart tells you to take. Um, Parents are great guides. Um, pick what your heart tells you to take. The only thing I would caution you about is that with American Sign Language, which is a great class and we have a fabulous teacher, make sure, look ahead, not all universities accept American Sign Language as a prerequisite. More and more are every year, so I don't think you'll have too much trouble with that, but um, you may want to double, double check with that. Uh, other than that, Take what you, you enjoy. Um, we hope to keep you for a lot of years. And if you stick with it, you can come out of high school speaking another language pretty well. Thank you so much. 
Okay, coming in hot here off the stage, we have Mrs. Styles. Here she is. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Don't. <laughs> Holy cow, you're going to be freshmen? I got a whole room of rookies to talk to? Hmm, what should I say? I don't know. You, should I trick them? Or? You should just be honest is okay. what you should be. All right, there's a bunch of stuff we don't need here. Okay, so I'm going to introduce you to the social studies department because I think we're the best social studies department in Michigan, if not in the whole country. Um, I'll tell you uh, if any of these teachers teach something that you might be able to take. I just catch my breath. That sprint here just about wiped me out. I'm old. Okay. All right. So did, I did you run you, here? Is I did. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was going to be late. So I'm talking about the Cold War. Yeah. So anyway. Okay, so I'll introduce you to my department, and what I want you guys to know for sure is that it's gonna be okay, all right? The first thing to know, it's gonna be okay. Like, breathe in, breathe out. It's gonna be a great year, okay? And any of these social studies teachers are here to help you. So some of these teachers you might be able to have next year, some of you maybe you'll have in two or three years. But at least you'll kind of know the program for social studies up here at Forest Hill Central High School. So this is Mr. Riley, a great guy. Um, kind of newer, a couple years, he's been here a couple years, uh, and he teaches a class you might want to take, which is Honors Model United Nations. Great class. Um, what you do is you talk about different problems that go on around the world, and you actually become a country, and you actually go compete at Model United Nations tournaments around the state. I think they go to UMIN, which is like University of Michigan, Model United Nations, and Gloomin, and Schmoomin, I don't know, they're all named Umin something, okay? So if you want to go compete about world events, uh, we're great at this, we have a great history with this, and Mr. Riley does a good job. And you might have him for U.S. history, and you know what, actually, you might have him for econ next year. Really, the only thing you have to take for social studies next year is civics and econ, okay? And so he, I believe, is teaching a little bit of that as well, okay? So that's Mr. Riley. Uh, Mr. Anderson, uh, and his room is down here, kind of on this, this hallway down on the way to the auditorium, whereas a lot of our rooms are up by the other part. So anyway, you very well might have him for civics and econ. Um, if you want to get on the AP track, uh, if you want to get on the AP track, maybe your senior year you might have him for AP, AP econ or some U.S. history. Okay, so those two teachers you could have for sure. Me, probably U.S. history sophomore year. Moving more quickly, Mr. LeBenz, he's our AP U.S. history guy, uh, does some, some other AP stuff. But uh, you might want to get on the AP track for social studies. And what that looks like is um, AP U.S. history your sophomore year, AP world history your junior year, and then you can take AP government or AP civics or AP econ your senior year, okay? So that would be Mr. LeBenz. Brad Anderson, Mr. Brad Anderson, um, he is our AP World History guy, also a wrestling coach, so that wouldn't be till your junior year. J-Lo, okay, he's awesome. He teaches a lot of civics, all right, and his room is upstairs, so a lot of you will have J-Lo. His name's Jared Lowe, we call him J-Lo. He's a great guy, okay, so look for him if you need anything, he teaches a lot of freshmen. Uh, Mr. Pierce, I want this quick thing about this one, um, he teaches social psychology, which is a freshman class. Do I have that right? Freshman can, okay? Yeah. Yes. That is the one psychology that freshmen can sign up for, okay? Uh, he does a wonderful job, teaches psychology all the way up to advanced psychology for seniors, okay? And he's upstairs. So that's Mr. Pierce, social psychology. Mr. Carhart, he teaches world history, history versus Hollywood, which is a, an elective for older kids. Uh, but that's Mr. Carhart, if you see him around. And then Mr. Manders, I think he was just here. All right, he, he is the one who would teach AP government your senior year. And then he'll teach the media stuff your other years. Okay, I think, did I go faster? You did great, right? you did great. Oh, oh, one more, Mr. Book. Uh, he's teaching a little, you might know him, right? He was, he was at the middle school as well. Can you imagine teaching at both schools? So he does do a little civics, and he also does a little U.S. history. So you might see Mr. Book. All right, give it up for Mrs. Stiles telling us about about the social studies. We're now going to try to get a little bit more stability and hear about the math department. <laughs> hey. 
Hey guys, I'm not going to introduce our department or anything because I'm going to keep that a surprise. Um, next year, freshman year, pretty much everybody takes algebra. If you're not going to take algebra, you probably are in the advanced track. If you're in the advanced track, the only other option is geometry. So it's a very sequential process. We have no gifted and talented math courses, no advanced math courses. You all will be in algebra or geometry, and everything is teacher recommendation. So I'm pretty sure your teacher probably recommended what you're going to take next year, and the pattern follows from algebra to geometry to algebra 2 to pre-calculus and perhaps even AP calculus if you're on the fast track. And that's it. Have fun. Thank you, Mrs. Wendt. Did you see the picture I found for you? Isn't That's that awesome. nice? Yeah. Okay, I found that one. Okay, now we're going to hear about all the wonderful options in the music department. So, I'm Mr. Poole, I know a lot of you know me already. In addition to working at the middle school, I get to work up here as the orchestra director, and I'm representing three people today that represent the three disciplines in music that are options for you for next year and for the following few years as well. We have a band, we have a choir, we have an orchestra. Within those ensembles, there are both uh, auditioned ensembles that you would try to get into, and those are based on your skill set and your level of proficiency. And there are also ensembles for you if you like to play an instrument or you like to sing. We have an option for you in each of those disciplines. Those of you that are currently involved in a music class have an idea about the kinds of things that we do, but up here at the high school, we do it more and we do it better. We are working on building your skill set through the same kinds of performance experiences, but as high school members, you have a little more prestige, a little more clout as you go through because you're building on all the skills you've been using all the way through since preschool. So hone your music skills, stay involved in your music discipline, band, choir, or orchestra. If you have played or sung before and you want to get back into it, freshman year is a great year to start that up again. See you around. Okay. Short, sweet, to the point. I did want to show, here's every music class that we do offer, uh, as well as uh, a lot of students have done music in middle school before, uh, but if you're interested in starting music, uh, starting an instrument or starting a career, uh, we have plenty of students that do that uh, as freshmen with uh, very little knowledge beforehand. We did those. Let's talk briefly about the PE department. Some of the options they have. Uh, for freshmen, you have two options to fulfill your PE requirement. One is fit for life, and the other is strength and conditioning. Yoga can fulfill your PE requirement. However, you're not allowed to take that until your sophomore year or later. Okay. The other uh, course that you need to take that's housed within that department is health. So what we recommend doing is having you take a semester of your health credit and a semester of your PE credit, and that creates a year-long course. Okay. Uh, we have some nice pictures there that talk about each of those classes. Okay. Um, let's take a, just a brief like two-minute break here. So just a brief two-minute break, chat with the people around you, and we'll get going again in about 120 seconds. All right, please start finding your seat. We have a, a late breaking. Real fast, Ms. Steensman is here from the PE department. Tell us about all the wonderful PE options real fast. All right. Good morning and welcome. I'm Ms. Steensma, as Mr. Perkins said. So you guys have some options as freshmen, but not as many options as you get to be an upperclassman. So you have to have a half a year or a semester of physical, edu physical education to graduate. So your graduation requirement can be these options. You can take Fitness for Life. It's one of the classes that I teach. Um, it is a team sports game. Um, our team sports class. For example, this semester we've played basketball, we've played volleyball, we've played badminton, we've played pickleball, and we're finishing up floor hockey today. All right, so it's all tournament play, all games, really fun class if you love team sports. Another option for you is you can take strength and conditioning as a freshman as well. 
Um, Coach Rogers, Tim Rogers, as you guys know, he teaches at the middle school as well. He teaches that class. And in the first semester, the classes are fourth, fifth, and sixth hour. Sixth hour is the football class, um, meaning that it's primarily just football players. If you are wanting to wait till second semester to do strength and conditioning, he teaches zero hour and first hour and second hour. What strength and conditioning is, it's for everybody, though. It's not just for athletes, not just for football players. It's for males, it's for females, it's for anybody who wants to get bigger, faster, stronger, prevent injuries, and just become you know, more fit as a human being. Um, another option that you can do is you can wait and do yoga. Um, another class that I feel extremely passionate about is what I teach as well. You can take yoga to get your graduation requirement as well, but you cannot take that as a freshman. So what some people do is they get their fitness for life done at their freshman year, and a lot of times that balances with health for the next semester, and then you have your requirement over with, and then you know later on, then you can take your strength and conditioning, you can take your yoga, and you can also take global games, which is an elective class. Um, if strength and conditioning sounds great to you as well, you can take these classes more than once. You can take it as a freshman, take it as a sophomore, take it as a junior, you know, if you um, want to get bigger, faster, and stronger. All right. There's some miscommunication, I think, last night when I met some parents thinking that strength and conditioning is only a zero-hour class. That is false. It is a zero-hour class second semester only. Um, and that's great. It's a 640 class. So if you are a world language student or a music student who needs to get your graduation requirement out of the way but you're, you're full, then you can hold off and do zero-hour. Right? 640 in the morning, you can get your workout in and then juice you up for the rest of the day. So that is an option as well. All right. That's what I've got. Juice you up. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Steensma. Good morning. My name is Mrs. Van Toff. I'm one of the counselors here at FHC. At FHC, we have four counselors to serve you. And we divide you all via your last name, your alphabet, and that's kind of how your counselor is assigned to you. So you can see Miss Young has that first half of the alphabet. Not first half. First part. She's in the back here. She's waving. Say good morning to Mrs. Young. Mr. Perkins has been presenting to you. He's taken a breather. It's been hard work, I know. And he has kind of that middle part of the, the alphabet too. I kind of am Mrs. Vantoff. I have that second half of the middle alphabet. And then Mrs. Arsolowitz kind of sweeps in the tail end of our group. We also have four administrators with us today. We have Mr. Passano. He can wave to you all. Mrs. Morris has been here as well. She's been floating around. And then we also have Mr. DiStefano and Mr. Udell, some friendly faces. So when you see them in the hallways, when we have you up for um, orientation this summer, make sure you say hi to everybody. So let's talk a little bit about what the role of a high school counselor is. Um, our job is to support you. We know that sometimes life gets in the way when you are trying to be your best academic student that you can be. We want you to find success in all areas of life, not just as a student, but as a communicator, as a problem solver, as a friend, as a collaborator, right? We want to really support you in those, in those ways. And so we stop into classrooms a lot. We do classroom lessons like what you are accustomed to with Mrs. Harvey and Mrs. Roberts. We do work on Naviance and help you with career planning and help you start to think about what life might look like after high school for you. I know it seems really far away, but those years go fast. We also do some individual planning with students and help them try and find what is their best fit while they're in high school, but then also when they leave this building and enter the job force or enter um, a college or other training program. And then we support students who are just having a bad time, right? If they are just feeling down, if they're feeling worried, if someone is... Um, kind of they're worried about, if they're worried about a friend, worried about somebody at home, we are there to help support you and have that dialogue and conversation and help connect you with whatever you need to help you move forward and be successful. Okay? This is a change. We know that change can sometimes be challenging when you transition to a new place. Um, but change is part of life. Again, we are here to help mold you into young adults who can be successful, self-sufficient, be positive, and be ready to confront any of those challenges that may confront you in the future. Let's talk a little bit about the importance of the freshman year, okay? 
We work with all grade levels, and we sometimes hear from our, our seniors, I wish I had put more effort in when I was a ninth grader, because then my options of what I can do after high school might be a little bit different, okay? So it's really important that you consider, well, when you're a freshman, the work and the effort that you put in then is just as important as what you put in later in high school, okay? Um, we want you to be really intentional with when you are selecting classes that you are not over committing or under committing. Do you think more students at Central High or Central Middle School over commit to classes or under commit? What's your guess? It's over. We tend to have more students who commit to things because they're super excited, but then they bite off more than they can chew. Okay, and on my next slide, I'm going to talk to you about the importance of balancing what you are doing. Okay, I'll get to that slide in a minute. Um, one thing I do want to say is one of the best ways to be successful in high school, okay, is to finish up your eighth grade year strong. When you start to sit back and say, I'm just going to coast for the rest of this year and wait till I get to high school, you're changing your habits. Habits are hard to change. And if you change those habits so that you're not ready and prepared when you enter that door in August of this building, that can be kind of stressful. It can be kind of exhausting. So we want you to really maintain that hard work level so that when you come and join us, you've already been there, done that. You know what that looks like to be a tough worker. And let's talk a little bit about the scheduling process. So right now we're working with you on your course requests, okay? That's what we're doing. That's what we'll see, with you, see you next week for. We will help you do some more individualized planning on what course is the best for me, right? You'll, you're getting the gist of a lot of those courses are already givens. Then we build our master schedule, okay? And after we build our master schedule, we build it based upon what you tell us you want to take. We assign students to hours and teachers, okay? After that is done, we may have some minor adjustments, adjustments we make, but we really don't do a lot of schedule changing at the high school level. That's why it's very, very important that you take this process seriously and you really take some time to be very intentional with the classes that you are selecting um, for planning ahead. Let's talk briefly about what the graduation requirements are. To graduate from Central High, you must earn 22 and a half credits. You can see there are two subjects you can expect to take every single year. That's math and English, okay? After that, science and social studies are two other major core classes. You can expect to take those for three years. Phys Ed, we just met Mrs. Steensma. You're expected to take one year of a PE and health blend one year of that Visual Performing and Applied Arts, we call it VPAA for short. One year, at the very least, of a world language credit, and again, you can take two years of world language and one year of VPAA, or one year of VPAA and two years of a world language. It's really what is best for you. And then the remaining credits are electives. How many of you joined us last night? Oh wow, that's a great number. Okay, fantastic. So you've seen this. Hopefully some repetition is, is appropriate because we would want to drive home just how important this is. Um, but for those of you who were not with us last night, we visit this a lot even with our juniors. Our juniors this year who are going to be seniors, we gave them the reminders of the things we want them to really think about when they're selecting classes. Okay, as we said, Central High students are really eager to commit to a lot of things, but we want to make sure that they're being reasonable with themselves. So for my students who are thinking about an honors class or thinking about a class that they think might be challenging for them, you need to first ask yourself, are you prepared to take that class? Okay, have you done the necessary work in a prerequisite class, for instance, in an English 8 class? to be successful in an honors nine class, okay? Are you passionate about reading and writing? Is that something you really care about? Or is that something that feels like somebody's pulling your tooth out and you think, oh my gosh, this is just miserable. I don't want to do those things, okay? You have to ask yourself that. Are you willing to do all the work necessary to be successful? You got to be an active participant in class, okay? 
High school is much more, it's collaborative. You're doing that at the middle school level, but it's, you really can't kind of hide in a classroom, all right? You can't hide and be the, be the one who sits back and watches others do the work. We want you to engage. And then finally, programming. This is the biggest piece. We know that we have tremendous things that our students are involved in, both in the high school and outside of the high school with extracurriculars. It's really important that you are asking yourself, am I committing to too much so that I can't maintain my life outside of school as a high school student, okay? So that overall programming piece. If you know that you have a babysitting job or if you know that you do sports in the fall and the spring, you do other things in the winter, make sure you can balance that course load. Really ask yourself and be honest with what you can and can't do, okay? Um, I think we're good. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna pass the mic to Mrs. Arsolowitz and she's gonna show you what it looks like to actually input classes into PowerSchool. Good morning. So I'm not showing as much as speaking, so I know it's hard to just listen, but I want you to turn to your front sheet, the front of the pink sheet. We're gonna talk through this a little bit. Um, you may have questions as you really start to fill it out, and Mrs. Harvey is available to help you with that throughout the week um, when she's there. So people can help you, your teachers can help you. Um, if you. We want you to fill this in in pencil so that if you make an error, you make a change after you talk with a teacher or you talk with your families, it's easy for you to make that change. So a couple of things I just want to talk through with you a little bit. Notice that it's due next Wednesday. We are going to come to the middle school, and I think we'll meet with you in the media center, and we're going to make sure that you have answered all the questions, that you have everything entered into power school. So we'll talk about that a little bit more. But obviously, we need your name. We ask for your phone number, mostly because if there's an issue um, and it's in the summer and we need to reach you, Right? We know that most of you don't check email yet, so that's why we're asking for a phone number. We do expect that your parent signs this after you fill it out. Okay, um, And then the teacher that you have to have input from and actually get their initials on is your math teacher. Okay, So there's some notes in the middle there. Um, the course description guide, so everything that we're presenting, everything we presented last night, everything will be available online. So if you do, like you leave here and you're like, oh, I remember that guy talked about um, bench woodworking, I want to learn a little bit more, you can read about it in the course description guide. Okay, um, or you can just Google the FHC counseling website and you can find there's, there will be links to say, here's, here's a little video about what that class is like. Okay, so now we're looking at the nitty gritty. So if you look at that middle box, most of you will not be filling anything in for zero hour. Okay, most of you will leave that blank. See how there's English on the left and English on the right? It's because it's a full year course. So if you take a full year course, you take both semesters, you kind of write it in twice. So be English 9 and English 9, for example. Your social studies choices go, then science, biology, math, okay? Then those last couple of spots are kind of your elective spaces. Most of our students will choose two of those three. So some of you are gonna decide to either start or continue your world language next year, okay? And that might be in there, your VPAA might be in there, your PE and health, so that's typically what students will do. If you're in a music program, that may take one of those spots. It's okay, we often have students say, well, do I have to start my world language? No, right, because you've got quite a few, if, if school and you're looking at that balance piece, world language can be started in a sophomore or junior year as well. That's one of the areas that if you're kind of like, oh, I'm, homework is tough, I'm not sure how I'm gonna feel about everything, that's one of those things you hold off on a little bit, um, but some of you are really eager to get started and that's okay. So when it comes to those electives, if you look on the back of your sheet, notice how there's Y's and S's. Um, if we look, for example, under the Visual Performing Applied Arts, which you heard a lot about today, most of those are semester-long classes. So that means that you're gonna plop, you're gonna put that in either semester A or semester B. We don't know exactly if it'll get it first or second semester. But if it's a semester-long course, you just write it down once. If it's a year-long course, for example, if you look in the music department, if you're singing in the choir under elective, you would write choir twice. Does that make sense a little bit? So when we talk about electives, if it's a year-long elective, you're writing it twice. If it's just a semester, you put it in once. Now if you look down below with alternates, alternate means if something didn't fit in your schedule, what else would you take? 
So let's, for example, say that you wanted to take Chinese next year. Our Chinese, one, we share our Chinese teacher with all, all the high school, so she's busy and she travels. So she's only here one or two hours in the day. So let's say you're taking Chinese and you're also taking um, Honors English 9, and they happen to be offered at the same time. Don't worry if that's your choice at this point. Maybe they don't both work. Okay, so then we'd have to know if you didn't get into Chinese, would you rather take sign language or Spanish or would you rather take a VPA credit? So for any of the electives that you're filling in, you need to have alternates in case something didn't work. You don't need alternates for your core classes, but if you were to pick bench woodworking as one of your your um, electives, if that didn't fit, would you want to take Mr. Miedema's um, engineering graphics, or would you rather try intro to business? Those are the kinds of questions you have to ask yourself this week, okay? Um, are there any questions on the form? Not specific classes so much, because you can keep talking about those, but about the, yes, sir. Yes, sir. The points. The, you mean the credit system? Credits, okay, don't worry about the credits so much, okay? So the biggest thing, because we, we work with you freshman year, sophomore year, junior year, senior year, about how to fill in your credits. But when we talk about visual performing art, applied arts, meaning one credit, that means two semesters, okay? And so if we're talking about a semester class, that fills in just one side of the sheet. But it's confusing the first time you do this. If you do have questions, your teachers in the middle school have seen these before. They can help you. Mrs. Harvey can help you too. Okay. What was your second question? Very good question. He had a great question. The question was, for a semester-long class, can you take it twice or are you forced not to? Typically, the answer is you can take it once. Okay, so if you take intro to business, you're only going to take intro to business once. Now, there are some exceptions. So a student who is in um, some sports might do strength and conditioning, and they may choose to take that both semesters. So it sort of depends on what the elective is, and that's a question you can ask the teachers or your counselor. Yes? Okay, so that was a good question. So let's say you sign up for a year-long class. If you don't like it, can you switch it at the semester? Probably not. Okay, so that's what we'd like to say is there are some exceptions to that. Sometimes you can change. But typically, for example, if you were taking a language, it doesn't look great to drop a language halfway through a year. Okay, um, if you sign up for an honors class, you're kind of committed to that honors class. So that's when we talk about making really good choices now using your resources, talk to your current teachers, talk with your parents, talk with the counselors if you're really not sure if you can handle it. What you sign up for now, if you look at that last, if you look at the paragraph right above the boxes, by completing this form, you're agreeing that the courses listed will determine your schedule. You are determining your schedule for all of next year. Good question. What was the question in the back? Um, where are we looking? On the back? Oh, so that's a really good question. So if there's a little asterisk, that means that there, it, you have to have a prerequisite or teacher approval. So when you're talking about French 2 or Spanish 2, you have to make sure you've had French 1 or Spanish 1, the high school equivalent. Good question. And though, that's kind of true for any of those asterisk things. It means there's a prereq. Yes, ma'am. Really good question. The question was, can you test into AP history? So there's no testing into AP courses. We'll talk a lot more about AP courses next year, but if AP means advanced placement. And advanced placement is kind of complicated, but it basically means it's a college level course. I think this year out of our about 300 students, we probably, we had less than five that took an AP course as a freshman. So it's a very big exception to that. So when we talk about testing out, typically you would not test out of, you don't test out of a social studies to take an AP US history. But that is a really complex answer uh, th that you have to come up with, with in conjunction with your teacher's parents counselor. 
Does that make sense? Um, a lot of times students will so, f yeah, I think I'm going to leave it at that. Any other? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Good question. There's a question on online classes. There are online classes. We don't usually have freshmen take online classes. And that's one of those things that as we get to know you and we work with you in the fall and in the spring, we would help determine are there any online classes that might be appropriate. Yeah. So these questions are really good. And I love that what you're doing is thinking ahead. So that's great. What we really want to focus on is next year. If there are decisions that impact next year, talk it over with your teachers, counselors. We will be in the building next week. Okay, the last thing we're going to do is only going to take a couple of minutes, and Mr. Perkins is going to talk you through that. Okay, really fast, I want to show you guys how you can enter in your requests into PowerSchool. I did put directions at the top right corner of that pink sheet, but when you log into PowerSchool on the left-hand side, you will see a link that says course re or class registration. You'll see that each of your subjects are listed here. So for example, in where it says English Language Arts, you're going to go over here, you click on the pencil, and you put in which class you're going to take. Notice that there's two options. There's English 9, there's Honors English 9, and then within those, there's a first semester and a second semester. So where it says B110A, that's first semester. B110B, that's second semester. So you would need to select both of those options. And then you hit OK, and you can see that it pops up on your screen. So you just go through each of the subjects, putting in what your requests are. What's on your sheet should match what's on the computer. Shouldn't be too difficult. You need to have those sheets filled out, completed with all appropriate signatures and information by next Wednesday. Hey, we'll be coming back down to the middle school and seeing you at your building uh, on Wednesday with those completed sheets. Anything else we need? We're good. All right, so thank you so much.